Welcome back to the channel. So here we are with the Tamiya Spitfire Mark 1A, which is a um, uh, you know, new release, a very nice kit. So that's just showing you the markings we get in the box. I'm not using those. I'm using the extra decal set and we're going to do LZN. It's a bit of a flash there, but it's blue underside, red nose comb, bit different. We get um, some photo etch in there, but this is the from the Edward set left over. And I'm going to use this to utilize the headrest armor. I was going to use the seat armor as well, but it wasn't, didn't quite fit. But you'll see that as we go forward. So there you go. Just glue in the um, side of the fuselage, which uh, goes in very nicely. Uh, you've got two separate sections, uh, one for an open cockpit, one for a closed cockpit. Fantastic stuff from uh, Tamiya, uh, as you would expect very very well executed um i just sanding this back a little bit because i think i didn't quite get it right and you've got a these kits are very highly kind of engineered so you need to get it right um and if you don't don't worry about it you know just fix it like i've done here this is possibly even two minutes uh work here to get this sorted and just blending that out now um, I don't need to go in and do panel lines or anything. It's all there are. There is nice gaps there. It's all quite natural. It's just I got a tiny little step that I wasn't happy with, so I wanted to fix that. And we got the uh, part for the tail wheel in as well, and ready to go. So as we go on through, you can see the join there, just mating up towards the uh, fuel tank armor. And now we're on to the seat armor. So. I've drawn around the Edward uh, plastic kit part because the photo etch bit didn't fit. And this is making my own one out of plastic card, which is uh, one mil thickness. All a bit kind of, you know, by eye, as it were. But <laughs> you don't need to worry about those sort of things. And uh, the reason for doing this is the holes are in a different place for where it joins behind the seat. Uh, and that's what you can see. So this gives us a chance to be able to drill that. So I've measured it, as you can see with the crosses. And we're just drilling those out to allow the arms for the back of the seat rest, which is fixed to the bulkhead, to fit. And it just kind of slides up there. I'm trying to do a lot of the things in, in sub-assemblies, as you can see. There's, so the seat goes on and joins in and sandwiches it all together. And that's what we're looking to make. And it looks the part. We've got the headrest armor just going in there now, complete with the hole for the harnesses. And there we go. I have used uh, Mr. Color. I think it's 364. Um, it's their interior green for British aircraft and used the silver for the, the back. And there are the harnesses from the Tamiya Photo Etch Fret. Just sprayed them up. And now it's on to the... Uh, weathering of the inside of the cockpit so this is the inside of the fuselage halves and just using some panel line washes there to give a feel as to what we want and it looks the part it's quite nice all goes together very nicely and it, the the, the weathering is quite subtle over the green there and it's quite nice and I'm I'm reasonably happy with it and uh, just now uh, doing this on the other side of the uh, fuselage interior and this is um, one of the panel lines that I'm using, so uh, natural brown. And I'm just enjoying the enamel washes just for ease. Showing the construction there of the cockpit tub. Plenty of detail in there, all out of the box. And there's another one of the MIG washes I'm using. These are the panel liners that I'm quite liking at the minute. Whole selection of them. The streaking rust effects is just another dark brown. It's, it's nothing to do with actually adding rust. And the enamel odorless thinners, which I like to work with. Now you can see on the, the base plate of the wing, you can just see that's where the, it, the cockpit tub's going to cradle in there a little bit. It doesn't fix there, it just kind of sits there. But it's a nice subtle weathering. You don't see a lot of that, but it's nice to know it's, it's in there. Never hurts. This is my uh, matte varnish of choice at the minute, GX114. And we've got glue and glaze there on the uh, instrument dials on the instrument panel, giving the glass effect. A little bit of wiring added there as well on the internals. And there you can see the completed um, fuselage assembly. So it's all in, sandwiched in nicely. Absolutely no issues whatsoever, uh, just as you would expect with Tamiya. And a bit of a dry run on the 
lower wing there just to to check how that fits so we've got a gap there on the up at the end of the cowling and this is something that Tammy has left off I can only but think because they plan to have Mark 9s in the future some Mark 9s do have this feature as, as, as a separate panel for a panel line seems a bit silly for me to be honest um, but anyway that's a scene we've got to deal with and I do deal with it reasonably effectively and there we go just using a bit of primer to check how that's looking uh, but it is okay And then we're straight on to the tailplane assembly. So these are the horizontal stabilizers with the uh, elevators at the back there as well, just sandwiching together. We have another unnatural seam at the end there, which we need to deal with. Again, I think I just used Tamiya extra thin, pushed it up nice and tight, get a bead of plastic, sand it back, and the seam was gone. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. It's all simple stuff, this build. This would be a great place for... Um, people to jump in with their first aircraft or you know maybe their first more advanced aircraft because you get a, a photo etch fret now here we go how's that going to work is it going to be all right is it going to go in do we have to adjust the uh the angle level it up of course not straight in no problem never doubted them tamia at their finest so that's a nice thing that i always worry about so uh, i've got the old um horizontal stabilizers all nicely done and a clip in the rudder there a little bit of etch gone in there as you saw with the tweezers and then we've just got the final part there which is like the you know the rod that works the rudder now um another feature uh, the edward tend to overcomplicate in their kits uh the wheel wells look at that God, dear, nearly dropped in there. Absolutely marvellous. I know a lot of people would argue that, they, you know, you hear people saying they don't get enjoyment out of Tamiya kits or this, that and everything else because they're so easy to build. Well, you know, they're a breath of fresh air sometimes. This was just what I needed at this moment. There was not a kit that would have fit me better at this moment than this one for getting me back on... Um, the right road for, for modelling and uh, these kits are absolutely perfect for that as I said I've uh, picked up the, the G6 which I'm hoping to use in a similar manner for when I want a kit just to work for me and I don't want to have to work for it these Tamiya kits absolutely state of the art perfect I mean look at how all that slips in usually wingtips is a nightmare but not here not in this case so there we go, just um, final test fit of the fuselage to the wing join and the, it's the, uh, the big moment of what wing root gap do we have and we don't really have one. I think I do eventually put a bead of Mr Surfacer down there and with a cotton bud wipe it away with some um, cellulose thinners because there's a hairline gap but I mean... <laughs> It's more me because I actually think I get one of these upper parts of the wing slightly off because I notice it as I go down and work around parts here. Look at that chin. God, dear. Sublime stuff. Absolutely brilliant. So I can um, not stress enough that you need to test fit. Like I said, as much as it is a fantastically fitting kit, you can get things slightly out of a line if you don't do it correctly, and that is on you it's not on the fault of the kit uh, but you need to just take your time it's very easy to rush through the processes on this uh, there we go a bit of f photo etch grills there for one of the uh, lower the underside of the wing intakes and that's nicely done again keyed all of this is keyed so you can't get it in the wrong way another perfect Tamiya thing that they do you know you just cannot stick it in the wrong way ejector pin mark in an awkward point was well, not an awkward point it's in a brilliant place but it's a visible place so you just need to sand that out which i did and there we go we got a spitfire on our hands before we knew it um you can see the graceful wing of the spitfire it was only a year or two ago i would have said i don't like the spitfire and um i've certainly changed my tune on that uh, i don't think there's anything quite like the plane to be honest and uh, this kit really does it justice so there you can see seam lines are all sorted isn't really any to speak of that we have to worry about and there we go we've got a spitfire ready for paint now talking of paint 
Um, we've got the sky blue colour, which uh, may or may not have existed. Who knows? It may or may not have been on this model, uh, this, this variant. But anyway, that's what I've used. Uh, whispers it. ROM 65. But don't tell anyone. So we're going to put um, that on as the sky blue, because it's actually a very good match. And there we go. Cool. Look at that. I'm going to do this as a captured RAF one in German. No, we're not. How dare, how dare I even mention it? But yeah, there we go. So we've got ROM uh, 65 on the underside, and I think it's a really good match, actually, for the colour that we want. And then this is by far the best colour for me, for dark brown. 369 by Mr. Colour. Gone straight on. Obviously, mass the underside. Um, looking the part now. So now we're going to go on with 361, which is the RAF dark green for the uppers and the camo. And for that, we're going to do the... Um, Oh, well, I've just shown you here, we've got LP7, which is a bad choice. Do not copy me here. That red is a pinky red, very, very pinky red. And that's the yellow we're going to put on the wingtips that have already been sprayed pink, which I like to do to bed down my yellow. Um, and the canopies masked up with the masks that come in the kit. And here we go, ready to get this camouflage painted, which can be a really time-consuming thing. Um, but for you, it's very quick. There we go, all done. So, I've shown it before, I didn't show it again. It's um, it's white tack uh, method. So just roll white tack sausages, as, the, as you call them. Put them around for the masking shape and then infill with some cheap uh, washi tape. That's what I've done here. Gives you, um, it can give you a feathered edge, but if you spray right up at it, I get quite a nice hard line edge, which is what I want in this scale. I don't want to mess about by doing freehand, you know, when you look at pictures, it looks like it's a hard edge camouflage, so that's what we want to do. Um, so now we're going to get the model ready. I do actually gloss coat this one, as you can see, it's very shiny, and just as we've just straight up Tamiya um, gloss X22. And um, we've got the extra decals on, which have gone down nicely. For me, the way I got them to fit to work was just with micro sole and micro set, not complicating it with anything else. And then just going on now with the micro sole. I have found if you actually cut, you've got to cut around what you want, which is what I'm doing. And this looks drastic, but I'm barely touching the surface. I'm just trying to score the carrier film. You can actually work the carrier film off. Now, of course, you could do this on the sheet. You could cut the decals off, but you'd, it's difficult for the placement, and they are a bit finicky. So this is how I go about it. Um, not the best. You're not going to do this to an award-winning model, but that's not the point of this model at all, so I don't mind. I could have probably left them on there and with a matte coat, it would have gone away. And they've bed down quite nicely in the panel lines. And there we go. Everything's painted up, ready to go into the weathering. There you can see the pink spinner, which I'm never too sure about until the end. And all I do, I don't think I actually film it. I just put a red oil wash over it as a filter and it brings it back to the shade of red I want. So starting off with the weathering process, uh, I go quite into depth here. I, I have filmed quite a lot of it. I thought we'd... we'd focus on that since the build was over quite quick um panel lining at the minute so i'm just using a dark wash and it is literally called dark wash from uh, mig as i've said earlier in the video i've got into the mig washes um they don't replace oils um at all they go hand in hand um they're useful for different things and they're also sometimes a little bit more convenient um you know you can switch your brain off um i've also got a hairdryer recently um, that's by watching some of the Rinaldi videos, which is worth checking out. Very in-depth on weathering, but one thing I picked out that I did like was getting a hairdryer, so I've done that, and that speeds the process up. Quick blast with the hairdryer, very low heat, almost blowing cold as well. You want a hairdryer that can blow cold at the same time, um, and you can really move on through the process very quickly. Now, nice thing with enamels is you can just wipe it away with your finger like that. It's just quick for cleanup. Oils um, aren't as easy... It's not that they bite in, it's um, they would spread around if you did this. Whereas enamels dry quite fast, and you can, uh, but they don't bite. So there's Starship Wash as well. This is a great colour. Some of these Starship, um, sort of Starship filth, Starship Wash, you've got a lot of these coming out from the manufacturers. Really nice at building up a little bit of grime, darkening um, the surface, giving a bit of texture. So as you can see, I've done a panel line wash and then I'm going and picking certain panel lines and fading out from them uh, to try and give um, a bit of interest 
bit of definition to it. Not just the panel, but around the panel. Bit of patina, bit of um, uh, depth to it, I suppose. And then again, blending away. So this is with a dry brush. The brush you see coming in afterwards is always dry. It's not got thinners on it or anything. It's just wiping this away nice and dry, trying to blend it down. And this is where you'll really see it. So you can see there's a bit of work happening around these panels, which we've left. So now we're adding a bit more, which is the next stage. And we're gonna just blend that up and down and leave it as what you really see on uh, this age of Spitfire. You, you do see some uh, blending up and down, like deposits kicking up and down. And then we'll um, carry on with that and we will uh, deepen it as well and, and add more. I like how it cuts through the decal there, though I always like to, to get that. So again, looking at period photos, you see where they're putting, um, loading up the ammunition. You always get quite, quite a lot of grease deposits and chipping around these ammunition doors, so I'm adding that. And as you can see, so that is enamels at the minute. And then we'll go on with oils afterwards to try and deepen it. Um, this here is actually oils. You can see the difference now. So they're almost neat oils. You see the control you've got, because you can fin it yourself. You can't do this with enamel, an enamel wash. Obviously, with oil paints, you can start from oil and fin them to how you want. So the two go hand in hand. Don't ever get fooled that you need to either just use enamels or just use oils. Use whatever's going, you know. And again, key to it of all my videos is have fun with it. Now, what you're not seeing is all the time I'm hitting this with the hairdryer to speed the process up. I really quite enjoy that. I've been trying to work on uh, my weathering processes. Chipping here at the wing root. Starts off horrendously, does not look anything like the photo that I'm copying, and I am copying an, a, a photo here, specifically. Um, this is all stemming from me using the wrong paint. I'm using a buffables paint, which I shouldn't be using, and I regret, because it starts getting flex all over the place. I wanted to use Mr. Curler 8, but I couldn't find it at this point because <laughs> I was impatient. I wanted to uh, get on with it. But yes, as I'm saying, um, the hairdryer does speed the processes up, and I like that because I don't like the weathering process because it feels like it takes too long. I'm not... Um, I say I don't like it. I was having a whale of a time here, I must admit. But I don't like the idea of it. I guess. Bit of sponge chipping coming in on top, just again trying to, you know, add more when I should be adding less to try and fix things. And for me, I found that adding, speeding up the process a little bit or adding a bit of diversity or using more products all the way through has helped me to enjoy the process more. So that is what I found from it. And the hairdryer is part of that. Now, I wanted to add dust deposits now as well, again, using the same reference pictures and doing the same blending that we saw before. So just going in. So now with enamels, this is the one thing. If you do use a hairdryer, once you've hit an area, it warms the plastic up. So then when you go on with neat enamels, they dry instantly. So you've got to remember that. So that's why now I am going on with a brush that's thinned. Usually, if you haven't used the hairdryer, you wouldn't need to thin it because then it would spread it around too much. So just play with things, work around it, see, you know, see what works for you. Uh, and that pretty much finishes the upper weathering. Um, now the undercarriage here, I can't think of a better way this could be done. So it's a one piece undercarriage that Tammy will give you at the right angle. I've complicated it by gluing the doors on, which I wanted to do because I was going to forget them. So you get these panels which slide in nicely if the doors aren't on there. And then you add on the, the landing gear doors afterwards. But just forcing it in, it slots in. No glue. There you go. Scoop's gone in, all sorted. Unbelievable stuff. The one downside to this kit is the exhausts. And I know what Tamiya were going for, but I don't think it really works. So I've gone ahead and got the quick boost set, because they were only three quid. Had an order going into Hannant's. Who doesn't? Um, and there we go. So sprayed them up with uh, rubber black. Trying to cut corners here, and I do go back and do what I usually do and fix it. But just using some rubble um, pigments just trying to darken them up now i leave a little bit on the table here when it comes to the exhausts Use i know how to do it i just couldn't be bothered and sometimes it's important to say that because you've got to have enjoyment and if you don't want to do something in modeling don't worry about it i've 
PVA glued those exhausts in, thinking that, hey, maybe this kit's not going to be the, the one for me, so I can get them back off if I want to change it up. I did actually, you know, a couple of days later, have a breath of fresh air and think, you know what, I am going to try a bit harder. That's when I came on and did this. So we're back to the uppers, and I found this technique, which I, I'm, sh- I'm not saying I've invented, I'm sure millions of people have done this, I just stumbled on it, is putting in neat raw umber oils, and like I've just done there, blended it away, as it dries off, you get this darkening down the panel, which spreads outwards from it. And I really, really like it. You'll see it at the f- in the photos at the end. It gives a really nice effect. Um, it's the sort of thing you would do is post shaving, I suppose. It's a similar, similar thing. And now we go and ruin the model because again, I look at these pictures. I couldn't help myself that uh, uh, some of these these aircrafts spit a lot of oil out. And I thought, well, let's give it a go. So with a whole number of engine-based um, enamel washes, I'm going on here, and I'm just doing some streaking from these two holes either side of the uh, the intake scoop that we got there. Initially, I thought, well, this doesn't look good at all. But I kept working at it, and it's fine. It looks like the picture. It just doesn't look great on a model. And it's the colour. It shouldn't have done it to this colour. I wouldn't be using Sky this colour again. I do think this looks very much like what sky blue should be, but I don't think I'd do a Spitfire at sky blue um, again. It doesn't doesn't sit right, doesn't feel right, doesn't look right to me. It would be much better being the actual um, sky. Do I mean it's sky type S? I can't remember. Let me know in the comments below. There is a definite transition when they're talking about Uda Neil, sky, sky type S. It's one of those. It's a weird kind of bluey grey colour that they used. There we go, just putting the... Uh, finishing touches with the aerial and like I said that I uh, think I left something to be had uh, with the exhaust so we go back with the pastels and we add some white so what I do with the pastels is I just scrape these off with a blade and use black this brown color uh, this kind of ochre color and then the white and I have them in separate piles all kind of mixed together in the middle and I just brush them on and stipple them trying to get the white to sit around the exhaust edges and then darken it here and there and um, that kind of works it gives you that the look of exhaust a little bit and if you work at it you take a while it does look very good and go back through with some oil washes and stuff cut through it uh, but it was better than it looked before and that's the point I'm trying to make and as you can see the spinner a bit less pink it's just a red filter put on twice using red oil paint so this does bring the build to a finish, and we've got photos coming up now. So uh, thanks for staying tuned. I prefer this format a little bit. A bit more of a um, tighter editing, a bit of a shorter build. So um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, what you think of the model. Um, I'm reasonably happy with it. A bit different to what I usually do. Added a bit more weathering. Sometimes I do not. Um, that's one of my downsides, is I don't weather my models quite as much as I should. Um, let me know your thoughts down below. So, as always, thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned to the channel. There's plenty coming down the line as we go. There's some links down below uh, in my in the description showing you the website, Instagram page, uh, Facebook page. If you want to follow any of that, feel free to. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, give the video a like. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, as I've said before. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.